Good morning. I'm Dan Gepford at the Sussex United Methodist Church, and we are streaming live on April 5th, 2020, Palm Sunday. It's time to praise the Lord. I have gotten my suit on today so that I can be official for the, for the holiday to make it as festive and exciting as we can. We are here together uh, sending this to you from Madison, New Jersey, uh, where I'm staying for the pandemic. I hope you will join me now in singing Hosanna in the Highest. Hosanna in the Highest. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord, by God. Hosanna in the highest. Glory. Glory, glory to the King of Kings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Hosanna in the heart. Thank you to Sharon Craig Reinsmith, our great organist, for sending me the audio files of her recording of our music today. We appreciate her help and support in so many ways. Thanks also to all of my family here gathered. We have Susan and Patrick and Marcia all here. We're, we're happy to be together with all of you in spirit. We're grateful for your joining us today. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, we give you thanks for this day. Even scary days are a gift from you. Even the times when we feel isolated and alone. Even the times when we feel worried. Even the times when we are afraid. We know that you are with us and you do not let go of us. Today we give you thanks for all people everywhere who give of their time and energies to care and serve others. We pray for your church and for our community for our state and country and its leaders, and all those who seek to keep us safe. We pray for the people everywhere who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, not only those who are sick, but also those who are on emergency rescue teams for doctors and nurses and therapists and other caregivers, and those working in nursing care facilities and retirement homes and assisted living facilities, those working in funeral homes and those whose businesses and jobs have all been upset and disrupted. We pray for those who are hungry or desperate, those who do not have enough resources to live on, those who are depressed and in despair. And we pray for people all around the world who are struggling in this time, knowing that you hear our prayers and you care about us, that you never leave us, and that you hear us when we pray the words you taught us to say in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I invite you now to listen for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures. I'm reading today from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, 
The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing? I'm tying the colt. They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to speak especially to children this morning. So I have a particular message for you. This is a weird time, isn't it? When we can't gather together to worship in our usual way. We can't share our sugar wafers and tell stories in the way we usually do. We can't show our welcome and our love for Jesus by cheering for him and waving palm branches as we march around the, the sanctuary, just like people did when they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. But we can show our love for Jesus by helping other people, by caring for people who are around us and working for those people who are uh, trying to do their best to help us. We can also help out by, by doing what we can to encourage and, and show our thanks for the people who are working so hard to care for other people who are sick at this time. Lots of people are getting sick now, and there are doctors and nurses and, and healthcare workers and dietitians and breathing specialists, all kinds of people helping those people who are sick and they're working lots of, lots of hours. And so they need our encouragement and they need our, our appreciation and our thanks. So you've often made pictures for me to encourage me and show appreciation and, and be nice to me. I thought maybe we could make cards and, and pictures to send to our healthcare workers in the hospital. I made up a sample here. Here's a drawing that I made with, it said, thank you with a heart. And I drew a picture of myself waving to him saying, we love you, and signing it from, from me and from all the people of our church. Maybe you could draw a picture of yourself, show it, waving and showing your appreciation, or say thank you, or draw some other picture that would be nice and cheerful, that we could gather, we could send off to the hospital. We're going to mail them to the hospital and show our appreciation. I appreciate your doing that. I think it will be really helpful. I think it will be really exciting for people. I mentioned this idea to the pastor who works at the hospital, Chaplain Randy Parks, and he was so excited to hear that we, our kids might do that. So I hope you'll help with that and be an example to other people in the congregation. And I really hope everybody in the congregation will do the same. Draw a picture, write a message in big letters so that after it's been cleaned in the hospital, it can be posted up and give encouragement to everybody around. It's something we can do at any age to show how much we appreciate and love those who are caring for us. So let's pray then. God, we thank you that you give us things to do, that we can be helpful to others, that we can show our love and our appreciation as a way of showing our love for you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, who always loves us. Amen. Will you join me now in singing a song that I learned as, as a child? Tell me the stories of Jesus. <clears throat> Tell me the stories of Jesus, I love to hear. Things I would ask him to tell me if you were here. Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea. Stories of Jesus, tell them to me. First let me hear how the children stood around his knee. Then I 
I shall fancy his blessing resting on me. Words full of kindness, deeds full of grace, all in the love light of Jesus' face. Into the city I follow the children's bed, weaving a branch of the palm tree high in my hand. Yes, I would sing the best hosannas, Jesus is King. Well, it's a strange year. We don't know whether we can get palm branches. We don't know whether other tree branches would work. We don't know what to do to celebrate can't wave our palm branches in the church this year in the big crowd that we're used to being part of. We like being parts of crowds. I wonder if that's why a bunch of people didn't go out to see Jesus coming into the city because there was a crowd gathered to see him. In the old Bible that I have, there are headings for different parts of the Bible to make it easier to tell where you are and when the story and what's going on. They're added by the editors. And in most of the Bibles I've seen, it starts this chapter by saying, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We imagine, based on movies we've seen, that there was a monstrous crowd gathering to greet Jesus as he rode into the city on a donkey. But the truth is, the text doesn't say how big the crowd was. And it doesn't describe the entry of Jesus into the city as a triumph because of the crowd fact is, it doesn't matter how big the crowd was. It doesn't matter what they, what they waved, it says branches that they had gathered in the fields. It doesn't matter whether they thought it was a triumph or not, because the crowd was not the point, and the parade was not the point. It's not a triumph for Jesus in a political sense that he has been able to gather a huge crowd. That's not why he has come to Jerusalem. He is not giving a pep rally after winning an election, and he is not running for anything in the story. Jesus arrives on a donkey to proclaim his kingly authority, to symbolically announce that he is the one with authority to rule our hearts the one who is able to command obedience and allegiance, the one who is there to offer hope to the people. And his point to us is a challenge to welcome and accept him into our hearts, not to wave branches, not to make a spectacle. It's also not the point to give the people any kind of political change as such. But what the people said is important. The people shouted to him, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I always thought that word meant hooray or woohoo or something exciting about it. You would cheer at a baseball game or a football game when your team scores. But it doesn't mean that at all. What Hosanna means is save us, save us now. And that, in fact, is what Jesus does. Jesus rides into the city to proclaim his message and to challenge the authorities, knowing that the authorities will react by having him arrested and killed. It is his gift of himself that somehow mysteriously gives people hope, gives them life, not only now, but eternally. Gives them hope for the future, always a future that doesn't end, gives them freedom from despair, from pointlessness, from selfishness and sin, all the things that drive us down and drive us away from relationships with God. That's what Jesus offers, is a saving through his own self-giving. He can share that with others, and he allows us to share it with others too. That sharing of himself, 
is important. It is the meaning of the idea of communion is a sharing. When we commune with each other, we also commune with God. We commune with Jesus without a building, socially distanced, as in this time. We are still the church. We are still open. We are still the ones who proclaim the name and offer the hope and offer the grace of the one who saves us. I was kind of ambivalent on and uncertain on Thursday when Bishop Scholl, after much prayer and study, invited all the clergy online for a special communion service to share with him. I wasn't sure what to make of that by way of communion. But I found that service amazingly meaningful and comforting. I felt so connected with the bishop and with the other members of the clergy. I can't really explain why that's so. I can't really imagine the fact of what it means to be the church in a time when we can't see each other. But I know this. Jesus promised to be with us always, and that promise extends to the church in all times and in all places. He offers us communion as a way of being and sharing in his body, in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. Being part of that connection transcends time and place and space. It transcends national boundaries. It transcends historic time periods. We are connected in our communion with God and with each other beyond where we are sitting at the moment. And so I feel like we can commune with each other. We have that connection. We can share that connection as we are called. We can share that in many ways. We can share in this time. We have here gathered two or more. We have a quorum. We have a quorum gathered in Jesus' name and we can share. We can share this feast, and I hope you will share it with me in the way you feel best called. You can share in the sharing of food. You can share in the prayers. You can just watch. You can feel connected in your hearts, but I hope you will take this into your heart and feel connected to each other and to me and to Christ, who promises to be with us when we commune together. We can share a love feast. We can share a time of communion. We can share a time of grace. And so the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Lord our God, creator of the universe, our holy and loving parent, God Emmanuel. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join in their unending hymn, singing together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, who became flesh and dwelt among us on earth, offering yourself fully for our benefit. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to your disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
When the supper was over, you took and blessed the cup. You gave it to your disciples and said, This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance and celebration, we now offer ourselves, ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with your offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, singing together. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. O Holy Spirit, Pour out upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. All honor and glory be to you, most holy trinity, now and forever, as we sing together. Amen. 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 As we always do, we are sharing homemade gluten-free bread as a way of reminding each other that we welcome everybody to the same loaf, whether or not they have celiac disease. We share this as a remembrance that Christ's body is broken for us. This is a sharing in the body of Christ. We share a cup of grape juice so that those who are addicted to alcohol can share in this cup with us. For we share in the cup together. The sharing of this cup is a sharing in the body of Christ. As we share the body and the blood of Christ, we share his life, we share his death, we share his resurrection and his eternity. All these are gifts of a loving God who promises to be present with us now. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you, and blood of Christ shed for you. We give you thanks for this holy mystery. 
which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go forth in the power of your spirit to love and serve others, to be there for each other as we continue to be connected to you in all our ways. Amen. Each week we send out our prayers with our community cross for those in special need as a sign of God's presence and love. We continue to pray this week for all those who are in harm's way, serving to care for others in connection with this pandemic. We also send special prayers to all those who are suffering from illness, those who are mourning, those who are struggling. Lord, we pray that the cross we pray of hope will be a sign of your presence and love and also a sign of our prayers that we send forth with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Now I invite you to be the church this week in prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. First, of course, please continue to support your church. Pray for us. Pray with us. Watch our videos. Send your encouragement to Carol Ann and Sharon and Karen and Carolyn, our intern, our member who is an intern in the chaplaincy program at Morristown Medical Center. Call people you know. See how they're doing and see if there's anything they need or if we can help. I'm so encouraged to hear stories of members of our church calling other people and asking about them, checking in on neighbors, offering to bring groceries or supplies to people who can't get out, offering to help people in any way they can. I was excited to hear stories about people making face masks to send to the hospitals and stories of people who have sent gloves and other supplies. I'm excited to hear about people sending notes of encouragement to hospitals and other healthcare workers wherever they are. And I'm excited that we are in this together. You can also send financial support to the church. Send your checks to the Sussex United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 244, Sussex, New Jersey, 07461. You can also give online to save travel and public exposure through contact and paper handling. You send that at www.gnj.org slash online giving. The Sussex United Methodist Church is in the Skylands District and our church number is 2056. You can also serve the community by helping businesses and restaurants who have been so hard hit by this. You can order carry out or buy a gift card if you don't want carry out. You can send notes of encouragement and hope. You can buy gift certificates for other people too. You can help our medical teams by making masks with directions that are online there are drop-off bins at all the local hospitals, or by making cards with pictures and notes and thanks to doctors and nurses and healthcare workers. Mail them, if you will, to Reverend Randy Parks, Newton Medical Center, Spiritual Care Department, 175 High Street, Newton, New Jersey, 07860. We'll get more addresses for more hospitals as soon as we can and pass those along to you. They will be set aside briefly so that they can be decontaminated and then posted around the hospitals. Now, when you go to a store or to buy gasoline for your car, make a point of saying thank you to the people who are out serving us. There are people who are serving us because no one else can, and they are themselves at risk. So we show our appreciation and love by being patient, by being kind, by being appreciative and offering our thanks. We do these things because we need to be the church. This is a time when the world is all afraid, when people are hunkered down and hiding. We know that we need to self-distance ourselves in order to protect others. We need to follow all the guidance that we have received about caring for ourselves and avoiding hurting other people by giving them this disease. But that doesn't mean we can stop being the church in this time. We need to show our love every way we can. We need to show our compassion every way we can and to serve others. Thank you for being here. 
I hope you'll continue to be part of these services. We will have ecumenical services on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, and a special Easter service at, at sunrise on Easter Day as an ecumenical service also. We'll also have our regular worship services next week, so I hope you will participate in those services if you can. Now let's join in singing our closing hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. <clears throat> to love and serve the Lord. We can do that without fear, even in a scary time, because we know that wherever we go and whatever we do and whatever happens to us, the love of God the Father, parent of us all, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.